Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do a quick video for y'all tonight. I got done with some of the stuff I was working on a little bit early, but it's still already only like, it's already like 6 o'clock, so it's dark out already. But I'm going to try to, you know, do a quick video for you. I don't know how good the quality is going to be when I'm outside in the dark on the grill, but we'll see how it goes. I usually eat steak on Saturday night. Um, I didn't lay any out though because I didn't think I would be done with the work that I was doing here in time But I just picked up one anyway at the store instead of like thawing one out I already had Here we got a 1.2 pound bone-in ribeye Certified Angus beef I get these from Winn-Dixie and to me they're the best steaks I've ever had. They're better than public steaks. And public steaks are really, really good in my opinion. But for some reason, I don't know what it is about these. Maybe it's the Angus. Maybe it's because they're Angus beef. But they just are the best I've ever had, I guess. I forgot to show you all the star of the show. I just gave him a treat. We just got home. Here, bud. Have another jerky. All right, good boy. That's duck jerky, if anybody's wondering. I apologize for my voice, y'all. It keeps cracking. It's just allergies, man. It's like, this time of year, it's crazy. Okay, I just dumped the coals. I put the grates back on. It is hard to see out here, like I said, so I do apologize. There's all different ways to do a steak, but for me personally, I just like salt and pepper. I just like the taste of the steak. Um, that's just my personal preference. This is what I use, though. All natural sea salt. These are really thick, really thick flakes. There, you see how thick those are? And then I use this pepper grinder. I got a little bit left in this. There we have it, folks. Just salt and pepper, both sides, ready to go on the flame. Okay, it's been on for about a minute now. Those um, Angus USDA choice steaks have a lot of fat in them. And they're almost like a prime, so that flame gets up there and crispies up the fat really good. I have the grate that the coals are sitting on on the lowest possible setting too. And you can see how that fat is just catching that flame. Okay, it's been on that side for four minutes. I'm going to give it a flip. really hard to see because it's so dark out here I took these red potatoes and I rubbed them with olive oil all over them and then salt all over them okay it's been another four minutes we've done four minutes on each side I'll give it another flip what do you think about it coop you ready for some steak Mm-hmm. Oh, you're licking your lips, huh? All right. You want some steak? Mm. Okay, that side's been on for three minutes this time. I'm going to hit that side for another three minutes. And if we're lucky, it should come out to be like a perfect medium. Okay, I just pulled that baby off. It was on for 14 minutes. Pop these potatoes in the microwave. I gotta let that steak rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before you cut in. 
if you cut into it too early, you're going to lose all that juice and all that moisture inside and your steak's going to be dry. So I always let it rest for like 10 minutes at least. I mean, you don't want it cold, but you know, 10, 15 minutes is good. I just cut that potato open. I got this pure Irish butter I'm gonna put on it. I put that butter on it and hit it with some of that cheese. I'm gonna pop it back in the microwave for about 30 seconds. All right, I'm gonna hit it with some more cheese. Can't have too much cheese. Now a little sour cream. Actually, I'm gonna go with the bacon bits first. Now the sour cream. A little bit of pepper. Just cut that steak open. About medium. It got just a tad bit too much done. That steak is a little bit thinner than I usually buy them. I usually get about 20 to 24 ounce steaks. This one was about 18, I think. But it will work. You want some bone? Mmm.